All right, welcome to another video about math. This time we're going to be factoring binomials and trinomials. We'll start off with some binomial examples. So first thing you want to look for, if there's a common factor, you want to remove it, which means you factor it out to the left. You divide each term by the common factor, it's sort of like distributing, but in reverse. It's like you're undistributing the binomial. It's called removing the GCF, the greatest common factor. Next up, there's a subtraction. There's a good chance this is a difference of squares. Basically, you square root each of those terms. It comes from this identity, a squared minus b squared equals a plus b, a minus b. The idea is that if you were to FOIL it, the 4x and the negative 4x would cancel each other out, which means that's why you're only left with two terms. Next up. Again, it looks like a difference of squares, but first we might as well take a common factor out. Whoops, there we go. And then we see that there's an, a smaller difference of squares on the inside, which is, leaves us with an x plus 5 and an x minus 5. In total, we have three factors. That's something that the provincial will sometimes ask you. How many factors does the fully factored uh, version of your binomial have? Next up, we're going to look at trinomials. The first case where a is 1, basically what you're trying to do is you're saying, well, the last number, the c value, you want to find that's your product. And the middle number, like the b term, that's your sum. So what you're looking for is two numbers whose product is 36, they multiply to 36, but their sum, they add up to 13. So one approach to this is you just think of or you actually list out all the factors of 36. There's actually quite a few of them, so let's make a little list, and then we will look for the pair that adds up to 13. So you think about it for a bit, you see, okay, 4 and 9, 4 times 9 is 36, and 4 plus 9 is 13 and you break your trinomial apart into two binomials. And we're done. Next up, still dealing with a 36, but this time it has to add up, add up to negative 12. So this one's a little different, and we have to think about the signs here. What we didn't include before is that we could have actually had a bunch of negatives. So for example, negative 6 and negative 6 still multiplies to make positive 36, but when they add up, they make negative 12. This is a special type when you use the same number two times in a row, like negative six and negative six, it's called a perfect square trinomial. Keeping with the 36 this time, let's do negative 35x in the middle. So we have to think here is that we could have had a, a positive one and a negative 36. That would have added up to negative 35. And with any of these, you can always check by doing distri distribution, which we sometimes call FOIL in this case, because you end up with four terms, first outside, inside, last, and you just confirm that it equals what you started with once you expand it. All right, and last up, we'll look at what happens in a trinomial when that first term is a, so it's not one anymore. So your first approach should be, if you think there's a common factor that you can take out, you might as well remove it. In this case, there is, you can divide everything by three. So the three comes out front, and you still have a trinomial in there, and you say, okay, well, what multiplies to make negative six, but adds up to make five? Think about it for a little bit and think, okay, how about 6 and negative 1? And that seems to work. So you break it apart into its factors, and then you get the three factors of the trinomial. That's called being completely factored. Next up, similar looking one. The difference with this one is going to be we can't actually remove that 5 because it doesn't go in evenly to 16 and 12. So what we do instead is we multiply the a by the c term to get 60. And then we say, what multiplies to 60 and adds up to 16? So in green there, I'm listing out all the factors of 60. And then I'm going to choose 6 and 10. That's the only pair that would work. What we do with those is we break the 16 apart into 10x and 6x. This is a neat little method which basically allows you to factor out the common factors from each pair, bring it all together as 5x plus 6 and x plus 2. Maybe pause it there and convince yourself with the FOIL principles, why that's true. And you can always check your work by expanding out that last line. What we do is we sometimes call this the decomposition method because you have to break apart the 16x into two smaller terms. All right, well, thanks for watching, and hopefully that helps you a little bit. See you again soon.